What's up guys, Davey here from FunBuff and I'm finally back with another video and in this video we're going to be unboxing the Samsung Galaxy camera which is at least a product worth looking at in 2013 for two reasons. Number one, it's unlike anything we're really used to seeing and number two, it just may be what the future digital cameras will look like. So what Samsung did with the Galaxy camera is kind of the same thing they did with the Galaxy Note in the sense that with the Note they took a tablet, a smartphone, put the two together to make the Galaxy Note or in this case the Note 2. Same idea with the Galaxy camera but instead of a tablet they took a smartphone, thank God, and a digital camera, put the two together, and out came the Galaxy camera. Now, this is really similar to the Galaxy S3 because if you look at the spec sheet, they're pretty much the same. I mean, the same Exynos 4 quad processor, a gig of RAM, a 4.8 inch display, and of course, it's running Android 4.1 Jelly Bean with Samsung's TouchWiz UI. But the major difference, obviously, is the fact that this is a dedicated camera, or it's meant to be used as a camera first instead of a smartphone. And uh, that means it has a 16 megapixel sensor, which is definitely gonna blow the Galaxy S3's camera, or any camera on a smartphone for that matter, out of the water. And it has 21X optical zoom, which means that you'll be able to zoom in and zoom out without losing image quality like you would on a smartphone, because smartphones don't have optical zoom, they have digital zoom, which pretty much just enlarges the uh, photo, where over here you're actually zooming in with the lens and taking the same quality photo as you would if you are zoomed out. So anyways, let's go ahead and find out what's inside the box. So we'll start off by looking at the box itself first. On the front, there's a picture of the camera, some Samsung branding in the corner, and at the bottom there, it tells you that the camera has a 16 megapixel sensor, 21x optical zoom, and has a 23 millimeter wide zoom lens. At the top of the box, it just says smart camera and lists the Samsung website. At the bottom, you have your serial numbers. The left and right of the box are completely blank. And on the back, you'll find the specifications for the camera, which in this case is AT&T's version, which includes HSPA+. Of course, it has that 1.4 GHz Exynos 4 quad, like on the S3, a 4.8 inch display, which is what Samsung is calling an HD super clear LCD. So a little bit different from what you see on the S3, which is super AMOLED. And finally, what really sets this camera apart is the fact that it's running Android 4.1 Jelly Bean. Okay, so we'll go ahead and open up the box by taking out our trusty razor and cutting the two pieces of clear tape on each side. So we'll go ahead and prop off the top cover and set it off to the side. Spin this guy around and there she is. So you can see we got the white version here. I know that they have the uh, black version as well. Go ahead and pull it out of the box and you can see the plastic covering on the screen reminding us that it's running Android and it's got a quad core which is just awesome when you think about it. Take a quick look at the device before setting it off to the side. And uh, let's check out what's inside the box. So first thing you see is the AT&T SIM card, which is already in the camera. We got a quick start guide and uh, terms and conditions, which is available in both English and Spanish, of course, for the US version. Nothing too exciting there. So digging further into the box, we find a white lanyard, which you can connect to the camera in case you're clumsy, prevent yourself from dropping it on accident. Of course, we have a USB wall adapter, and with the wall adapter comes a USB to micro USB cable, which you can use to charge it or to connect the camera to your computer. And the last thing in the box is the battery, which is 1650 milliamps. So not the same one on the Galaxy S3, unfortunately, so you can't interchange them. All right, that's pretty much it for the box. So let's take a look at the device itself. On the front, you have a 16 megapixel sensor with 23 millimeter wide zoom lens, capable of 21X optical zoom, on the back, you have nothing but the 4.8 inch HD super clear LCD, which really gives the camera a nice sleek look, similar to what you'd see on a Nexus device. On the left side, you have a button to pop open the flash, and just below that, you have your speaker grill. On the right, you have a slot for the lanyard that we saw earlier in the box, your micro USB charging port, and the 3.5mm headphone jack at the top. On the bottom, you have your model numbers, tripod head slot, micro HDMI port, and a cover that opens up to your battery, micro SIM, and micro SD card slots. And finally, on the top, you have the flash that pops open that we mentioned earlier, a power slash standby button, and of course the shutter button with a ring around it that lets you zoom in and out. When you first turn the camera on, you see this boot up animation, which is a little bit different from what you'd see on the Galaxy smartphones and tablets. After the boot up animation, you're taken to the setup screen, which is surprisingly only two screens you have to go through before you can access the camera, which is much appreciated. When you do finally get to the home screen, you'll notice that it looks very similar to the Galaxy S3's. Of course, big difference here is that the camera shortcut shows up on all your home screens. App Launcher, for the most part, looks the same, just as everything else does. The biggest difference here is the camera app itself. This isn't the camera app from the Galaxy S3 or any other Android phone for that matter. You get a whole bunch of shooting modes that you could choose from. And for example, I'll go ahead and choose best phase and it'll shoot in that mode. 
being optimized for whatever you want it to do. If you don't like those, you can go to expert mode and customize it yourself. You could change your shutter speed, you could change your exposure values, and you could change your ISOs, which is really nice because you ultimately get complete control over how your photo looks. And when you're spending this much money on a camera, you wouldn't really expect anything less. So I'm glad that Samsung included it. Okay, before we wrap up this video, there are a couple of things I want to show you guys. One is that you can control the volume from the zoom in and zoom out toggle over here, which is nice because there isn't a dedicated volume rocker. The other is the way that the flash pops out when you press this button. You can see this pops out like that, you push it right back in, and uh, it makes a pretty satisfying sound as well, which is nice for me at least. At the bottom, you have the battery cover, which we'll go ahead and open up and show you You know the battery, the micro SIM and micro SD card slot which you can easily access as well as the micro HDMI port if you wanted to connect it to a TV. But that's pretty much it for me in this video. If you found it helpful, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Thank you for watching.